This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 851. Another Vote for Simplicity by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. And we have five shows where we narrate blogs for you, covering a bunch of different topics. Check them all out by searching for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. I'm gonna keep this intro nice and short, so let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Another Vote for Simplicity by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. There's a picture in this post that was taken over four years ago. It shows me running a steep hill here in Rockville, Connecticut. Unfortunately, the image doesn't do justice to the steepness and length of this hill. It's one of those hills that, if run at top speed, you may win an occasional battle, but after a few sprints, you will certainly lose the war. I'm fortunate to live in an area where I have access to several hills. They range from moderately difficult to downright brutal. Some are short and steep, while others continue upward for well over a mile. I've taken some of the best fighters in the world running on these local hills, and everyone shares in the butt kickery. It doesn't matter what kind of shape you are in, the hill always wins. And if a hill workout isn't challenging enough, you can always run faster. Running faster is the only modification you'll ever need. It is only a matter of time before the hill takes over. What's the point? Yes, hill sprints are tough. We don't need Captain Obvious to figure this out. So why am I bothering to tell you about hill sprints? The point to this entry is that simple workouts are often superior. A hill workout does not require any equipment yet can be as brutal as any. There is a mountain in my area that we've run for many years. I ran it when I was fighting, and I've taken other fighters there as a trainer. It's free to run. Anyone can drive over and park at the bottom. It's possibly the best workout you could perform, yet I can't remember ever seeing anyone else running the hill. Sure, we'll see people hiking in the woods or walking a dog, but I've never seen anyone else actually running the mountain. The hill serves as a tremendous resource that is freely available to all. You don't need to worry about changing the settings on a machine or dropping a piece of iron on your head. You don't need instruction from an Olympic track coach to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Running isn't complicated. We've all been doing it since we were toddlers. My son is just shy of three years old and already loves to run with my dogs. I didn't teach him how to run. It's a natural form of locomotion. Put your head down and run as fast as you can until you reach the top of the hill. Repeat the process as many times as you'd like, or are able to. People either don't know about hill sprints, or perhaps know too much about them, and don't want any part. Another theory is people seem to discredit simplicity. They falsely assume that complexity trumps simplicity when the opposite is often true. Perhaps it's a good time for me to share a favorite quote that I've referenced here before, and will likely reference again. In the words of E.F. Schumacher, quote, Any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. End quote. Keep it simple. It's almost as if we've been programmed against simplicity. Not long ago, I suggested hill sprints to a trainer who had emailed me in search of outdoor conditioning drills. He responded by saying that hills are fairly basic on their own, so would rather spice things up instead. My first thought was that he's probably never run hill sprints. I have my own athletes to worry about, however, and wasn't looking for an argument. I wished him the best of luck and thought that was the end of it. A few days passed, and he emailed me again. This time he wanted feedback on his ideas for spicing things up. He proposed throwing a medicine ball uphill. He would then have the group lunge walk uphill until they had reached the ball. They would then take the ball and do five push-ups with hands on top of the ball and then lunge walk with it in hand for four more steps. They would then continue with another throw. All I could imagine was a group of people throwing medicine balls and then tripping over each other trying to catch the balls that were rolling back towards the bottom of the hill. There is no way a group could perform this workout without mass chaos and confusion. And even if the workout was done solo, I still don't see the real benefit to it. What does it accomplish? Why not simply sprint to the top of the hill? If you want variety, perform an exercise at the top. For example, sprint uphill, then drop for a quick set of push-ups before heading back down for another sprint. 
Hill sprints with push-ups at the top are brutal. I used to perform this exact routine at a hill in Manchester, Connecticut. I'd run 10 sprints with 20 push-ups at the top of each sprint. I didn't need to lug any equipment with me and I always left with a thorough butt kicking. More than hills. Hill sprints are clearly effective, but I realize that hills are not always available. Hill sprints are also not the panacea to training. I didn't write this entry hoping that you'd abandon everything that you do in place of a few hill sprints, but rather as a simple reminder that complex workouts are rarely necessary. The basics work very well if you put forth a true effort. The simple lesson behind this entry can be applied to almost any style of training, not just conditioning. I have a friend who fought many years ago who continues to stay active with what many would consider a basic routine. Ironically, he remains in much better shape than most. He lifts weights one day, runs hill sprints with some calisthenics the next, and then hits the heavy bag on the third day. It's a very simple three-day plan that he repeats twice a week, always resting on Sunday. He has been doing this for as long as I can remember. He mixes things up by running different spots and changing the specific contents of certain workouts, but the general layout remains intact. Two days of lifting, two days of running and calisthenics, and two days of heavy bag work. That's it. He's strong, runs in local 5Ks, and can still hold his own with the gloves. Not a bad mix for a man in his 40s. Many could learn and benefit from this so-called basic example. You just listened to the post titled Another Vote for Simplicity by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Now, I don't think I can take credit for this quote. I'm sure I heard it somewhere, and I'm sorry that I can't source it. But I've said to people, there's genius in simplicity. And I've said that in many contexts. It's not just with physical activity. I've said the same thing when it comes to our meal planning too. One of the best things a person can do when they're first trying to lose weight especially, besides record what they eat, the other thing they should do is just keep the meals simple. Even if you end up repeating the same foods over and over, as long as it helps you stay on track in the beginning, that's fine. We'll throw in some variety a little bit later. But keeping it simple can help you stay on track. And in fact, this Friday for our Q&A episode, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about simplicity with workouts. So definitely come back for that. But yes, I am a firm believer in simplicity and can definitely agree with Ross's approach. Now notice, he didn't say that you do the same hill sprints day in and day out, you have to mix things up. And I'm glad he said that towards the end because we can get the wrong impression really quickly. We do wanna incorporate variety in our exercise routines. So he would never say, just run the same hill sprints day in and day out. You'd wanna mix things up. Sprint up a different hill. Sprint downhill. Sprint on flat ground. Take some weeks where you do more long distance training. Don't forget about resistance training too. This all makes for a well-balanced body. But you don't have to be too fancy with all of these workouts. And if you're still struggling with getting started, simplicity can help you take that first step. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week. I'll be back here tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.